Hi everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening in wherever and whichever part of the globe you are joining this webinar. Um, thanks for once again uh, uh, joining this session. Today I'm going to be covering regarding what is product discovery and product management and what are some of the techniques to do it. And, uh, and if you have certain frameworks to follow, uh, it would be very valid to do that because you can uh, get some new insights by using some of the frameworks that has been used by many other product managers uh, to discover uh, their product findings. So why? I think this is a valid question that we can constantly ask in, in everything we do. Why should we do something? And why should we, we do product discovery uh, what is the importance of doing product discovery what 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 would we land as a product manager to, by doing that one important thing is new prospects or you can call it new markets new customers uh, new user personas you can you can tell anything it, it fits into that prospects so you have a product and you know your audience sometimes by discovering and spending some time more time on your products and maybe even doing some market research you will understand that you can expand your product maybe to a new customer base or maybe even start a sub uh, service within your product which will identify a new uh, uh, market so it totally depends how you want to uh, position yourself but the idea is, here is to find more than what you can do in your product and another reason why it's a good idea to do is you will end up finding something completely new that you you know you have never even imagined about so new product innovation happens not just by mistake uh, always because it happens by constant experimentation and maybe trying to look things in different perspective so there are a lot of innovation techniques and probably even frameworks that you can follow in order to uh, start using some of these techniques and identify some new insights about a product and improving products ultimately this is the part that you want to be doing right so as a result of doing the discovery you want to learn something about your product newly that you can either use or you can at least be sure not to use so i think that is the piece that that you are always thinking about improving products a lot of times, a lot of product product managers think shipping a new feature is, is the most important thing and that improves the product. That's not always true. Just by deprecating something that's not properly used or not even consumed or engage, there's no engagement from your customer or user, that's also equally improving your products. You're making it simple. You're making it intuitive. You're making it easier for them to access something instead of having to go four steps to something, you are making it two steps to something. So improving products does not always mean adding things. It could also be removing things or maybe tweaking certain things that you have that you never even imagined that that would change the way how your users see it. So discovery is a continuous process. I think everyone would have seen this uh, this at some point and everybody would be thinking okay we should we should do ideation we should do some sort of assessment we should uh, experiment test we all know these terms and we all know why this needs to be done and and but the question is how do we how do we start where does this start how do we do it is the question so uh, basically discovery is, is continuous in your daily product management life cycle you would be doing something or the other as a part of this maybe you are just looking at some data and then you're starting to run some experiments and test some of your ideas or maybe you're, you're you have such a large feature that's requested by by your uh, uh, business side or maybe even your customers or users but because there's a lot of complexity around it you might you might want to just uh, you know, like leave a small pilot or maybe just a subset of that feature to test on the on the users directly, whether this is actually valuable. So you might be doing various of these things 
in in different parts of your uh, product management life cycle but what is like the product discovery uh, uh, life cycle itself looks like so first of all as a pm you need to actually understand how this whole flow goes so i would like to of course uh, talk about it step by step so the first thing that you have in your mind as a pm maybe you're working in a new product you're working in a in a matured product or maybe a product that's trying trying to grow further right there can be always these three categories if you're a new product obviously you want to like sit down make a list of questions that you want to ask who are you targeting what do you actually want to do what does the business want to establish through this product who are your stakeholders what does this uh, product end end goal is and how do we earn from this it could be many different kinds of questions similarly in a in a mature product you might be thinking you you have reached some sort of like a constant period and you want to see if there are new ways to you know um, grow your product or maybe even discover new market maybe identify if there are better ways of doing things and maybe you find that your competitor competitors product is having you know different ideas that your product doesn't cover maybe you want to do something different so there's there's an experimentation thought process already in there and you're a product trying to grow so you know the the target audience you 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 know who you want to land into and you you don't you know even your audience that you currently are serving maybe you want to improve that for them or maybe add more product lines and services into your product so that you can grow your business so there are different different groups who are trying to do this discovery process and whoever does the most fundamental thing that you have to do is list out all the possible questions that you have in your mind and you need to uh, you need to have this all in a list and this is just for yourself um a uh, practice to start writing the questions and see somewhere in this whole product life cycle management that you actually cover those open questions if not it it stays as a question that you want to keep discovering right so make a list of questions that you want to answer in this process and another thing that lot of pms uh tend to do is they try to do the product discovery as an individual thing which means they start with some questions they already build a hypothesis they already want to uh, do some experiments so then they approach a ux or maybe they they go to a, a senior engineer and ask them okay can you come and help me out with this experiment that i have in my mind and and we can try to find out the results so when we involve ux or or engineers in the in the middle way of that process they don't travel really along they don't really know what is running in your mind what are you trying to solve uh, and maybe they if they had participated earlier in the process they would have suggested something completely different so it's very important to form a guild i would say so if if it is if it if you think that's a great idea i would suggest you form a guild or form a small team who is going to do this discovery process and for each of the for each of the um um uh, discovery process you can involve different engineer by this way they are also very happy because they know what's uh, what's like the new discovery item coming and they would also learn about the product in a different perspective because these people are also doing the daily jobs of you know uh, giving that customer value so they would actually see in front of their eyes that what's happening in the customer's life so it's a very nice activity that if you do it in an ongoing uh, basis it's very good to involve the team open questions opportunities ideas uh, you might have basically uh, done uh, probably some research in user surveys interviews and you would have got some insights somewhere you would have heard some user feedback and you would have made note of that some idea would have popped up already so first of all before even thinking that you want to pick up these ideas the first thing that you want to do is to actually understand what is the value it's going to bring your product have already is, is serving a group of customers it has a certain business goal that you're achieving when picking up idea it should not be in contrast to what you do or maybe like self conflicting in some ways so it has to attach to your business goal or business objective so it's always good to check that and also check the feasibility of the ideas which means that some ideas can be really moonshot it can take a long time to see the value or maybe it it is uh, it is it's not even relevant for your audience so you need to understand 
what ideas you are, you are picking and you have to assess those ideas as well in many different ways. And once you have that, you're going to define the hypothesis or the problem statements that you're going to solve. And this is very crucial because at this point, you're, you have already picked up your ideas and you know what is the value that it's going to bring for you. And, and at this point, you're just stating what value exactly from A to B, what do you expect that to be? So I think that that is the uh, purpose of doing this. And it can be a very interesting activity because if you have a team mem group of team members for the same idea, you could have two to three different hypotheses that you want to set and test. So it, it's, it's something exciting if you do it as a group and you'll find that there are so many ideas, so many perceptions for the same idea that you have picked up. And once you have hypothesis and you have problem uh, statements uh, basically uh, defined, I think good idea as a next step is to create prototypes or create some sort of wireframes or any sort of uh, working, small working product or POCs. There are different ways to call it. So uh, POC is proof of concept. So you could say anything or some people even call like a little bit of MVP, but I don't prefer calling it MVP because it's, it's not yet actually a working product. So uh, it's totally dependent on what um, you want to call it, but it's just a small working prototype to be tested on the customers. So testing is like the, I would say the, the final step of doing that. So, so you have a working product, you know what it needs to do. You are having all of that hypothesis defined, whether it meets the hypothesis or your predefined problem statement that you're trying to solve for the customers or the users, you're going to find that out. And if it meets everything, it's great, right? You're going to ship this and you're going to show that there is a value delivered. So it's a, it's a great thing. And sometimes you might find that there are some insights that you are not able to make any decision with. You, you will not get anywhere. You can't say it's a bad idea. It's a, it's not a good idea. Maybe it's an idea that it's not working at that moment. So you might want to like redefine your hypothesis and problem sta statements to test it and find out what it actually means for you. So, and the next one is, of course, there are ideas that are amazing for other products, but it not it, it is not a great idea for your product. So you're basically going to just, you know, uh, sunset that or maybe just throw it away because it's not relevant for your audience. So every idea that's amazing for some other product might not be amazing for you. So it's very important to understand that into your product. First of all, it has to, as I mentioned, it has to align with your business goals. And it, is it really relevant to your audience? And does it meet your commercial goals or revenue goals that if your, if your product is the cash cow in the, in the organization, you want to be sure any changes that you launch is not going to negatively influence that. And it's going to um, have any issues where it is going to self-conflict some of your other features that are more important in your product, absolutely useless. And one another example I would like to uh, give is like, I, I was working in a, in an e-commerce uh, web shop um, and it was related to books and uh, journals and other things. A lot of e-commerce sites, they had like the wish list. Uh, if you see like normal retail company, uh, e-commerce web, web shops, they'll have like a, a feature like wish list where you can keep adding things that you potentially want to buy. And this was an amazing idea. Like everybody in the team was like, we should try this out. We, we, we will see that users will start adding on the wish list and then eventually they will buy stuff. We did a small pilot on that. Actually, the usage was really bad. And, and the reason is because we found out that the user intent was like uh, either the user personas were more like they were students or professors or, or maybe like uh, studying uh, individuals who are just looking at that very moment, whether they get the content or not through these books or journals. And if they don't get, they don't buy it. So they don't sit and research about the product for like several days to buy it. So this is a very good example to, you know, like uh, it was a very good learning because we understood that 
even though we thought it's a very nice feature and and it is very relevant to our audience because they belong to e-commerce sector but that was not true because for the nature of business that we had the users didn't find that useful they they are immediate purchaser of this uh, books and content that that we sold on the site so you really need to understand the audience that you're targeting and how you can uh, make a difference to their life rather than just doing what other competitors do or maybe even your immediate competitor does because they might have different use case and they might have found that is relevant to their audience and not yours so there are some di discovery frameworks and this is something very interesting jobs to be done for example, like um, you can do this as an activity for your product. Just just talk to one of your customer or maybe like another customer, um, uh, one of your customer or maybe even talk to uh, anybody that you know, like even your colleague, right? It doesn't have to be about your product. You can ask them maybe like, what did they purchase recently uh, that's worth over, uh, you know, like $100 or something. And you can try to understand like why did they spend that hundred dollars for that product? What made them buy it? You know, and and it's not about just the process of buying it, but you actually try to understand how did they come to an understanding to hire that product. Jobs to be done is like, for example, I I bought recently I bought a pot and pan. I can I can describe my situation. So I bought a pots, the, the whole set of pots and pans for cooking. And one of the things is, why did I do that? Actually, my first intent was that I needed to play, uh, replace my broken pot. That was my intent. And the immediate thing that I saw is like when I went and tried to replace that pot, it costed me like, um, you know, like uh, twice the amount to actually uh, repair it. And I decided, okay, I, that was not something I'm going to do. I'm not going to spend twice the cost to repair something. So I said, okay, I want to replace this pot. And uh, I went to the online sites looking for the same brand, similar brands. And I found out that that was also expensive. Buying the end, buying one pot was as expensive as buying like seven pots in total as a, as a package. So I ended up buying the entire thing because I thought the rest of the things can also be replaced and I just bought it anyway. So if somebody interviewed me, if somebody from the company came and interviewed me, I would have told the situation and they would immediately basically think, okay, uh, my intent was actually not to buy the whole pot set. My intent was to actually replace the broken pot or even more. Uh, and that's also like, so that is that that is the problem that if I don't get a resolution, I might go into another uh, layer of um, uh, what the competitors are. An example of that is you might go into a, a supermarket and you might want to buy like a, a bread. The breads are not available anymore. You just think, okay, I have to eat my breakfast tomorrow, right? And what am I going to do? What is the other breakfast option? You would think that the, break, the bread options competitor are other breads only, but that's not true. The bread competitors are also eggs and maybe like uh, oats or, or others. So similarly, an oat, oatmeal company, they have to think who their competitors are. It's not just other oat company. For them, the other competitors are breads eggs so they, they think in a way where you have to satisfy your customer's need that is they have to enjoy their breakfast meal it does not matter what they are using to replace with that and jobs to be done is similar to that if you apply this framework to your product you will understand why the the customer or the user is actually coming into your product their intent to come into your product and how can you engage with them and and tell the right story to actually close the deal. So this is a very nice framework to understand different types of users. If you have so many user personas, people doing different things on your site or different things in your application or uh, product, you can definitely try this out. This is, this is an absolutely mind-blowing framework. There are many uh, good guidances that are available and uh, I would definitely recommend trying uh, trying that. But design thinking is also like a discovery framework. 
uh and um, i think design thinking is also like is is a upcoming uh, framework that everybody wants to uh you know use i would say that always try to understand what product you are in what is like the end goal that you that you want to steer your product into what framework works best for you is something you as a product manager should judge it should not be the market telling you design thinking is the best thing jobs to be done is the best thing or any other so it it's totally dependent on what you want to do you can even try out everything and you see what works best for you and then go for it so design thinking is is definitely abs- is definitely good and uh, uh, this is similar to the the process that i have described earlier so you basically uh, understand your customers you empathize you you basically go into their shoes and try out things which means that you sit with them you shadow you spend time with them to understand what are they exactly doing in your product how do they use your product and stuff so one of the very interesting um, uh thing that i want to uh, mention is for example um in recent days i think some of you would have read this uh uh research so in in amazon for example right uh they saw that um, they actually uh, suggest products that has to be sold together for example if you buy like a balloon for birthday party they would uh, probably suggest like candles and other things that they can automatically combine right so uh, basically they looked at all these algorithms that 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 they were doing for all the products they found a very strange uh, combination so they found that a lot of people were buying camera and then they were also buying um, like a like a ca- like a camera to ch- you know a security camera actually and then they also saw that they were buying like baby products and then they were very curious like what 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 is going on here what does a security camera have to do with like this combo of buying some baby products when they dig further and when they did some user research they found out the um, the security cameras are actually being used for baby monitors so the company that sells like a cheap security camera with an app so basically these companies were trying to understand what what was going on so they asked them is what what's happening so why are they buying so they would get like receipts where they can look at these things so they this this basically um created a curiosity so basically you have to assume that your users or your customers are way more creative than you are so i think that's why the empathy element is so valuable because you will try to understand how your users actually consume your product consume consume your product so that's that's possible only if you spend enough time with your customers or users and be in their shoe and start looking at things uh in their in their perspective so then you will start to think very differently from how you're doing it as of today so that contributes to some of the ideas and you can build prototypes and test so user surveys and data i think this is a, this is like a discovery frame ongoing disco- discovery framework that almost every product managers will use and user surveys are usually very valuable because you will you will probably have like a net promoter score or anything of that sort to mention uh, to measure your customer satisfaction which is which is a great idea you must do it you should do it on an ongoing basis because you can find any sort of uh, major red flags through these because your customers who who are really um, willing to be part of this product they will take an effort to answer these questions that you ask on an ongoing basis and give you some new insights as well or maybe some major red flags that you don't see because you are in 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 your uh, in your product shoes every day so they are your users they are customers they'll give you some new insights and data data is also very crucial so you you can look everything in so many different ways and data is one of the forms so i think this is also purely valuable and some of these ideas can be picked as quickly as from the surveys and the data insights that you get from a product you don't even have to do like all of that complicated framework but i still recommend doing those because that can be very insightful and valuable for you in in a long run and what is obtained as a result of this whole um activity of product discovery 
I would say that because you have a constant relationship with your uh, customers and your users, they will start to see what you are trying to make it happen for them. So it builds better trust on you as well as your products. And they will start to give honest opinion or honest feedback on your product. And this builds uh, a long-term relation and, and very good belief on your product. And this will go far along than you think. And customer journey is discovered. So a lot of times the, we work as product managers, we think we know our customers really well. We know that they're going to click A and then they're going to land into B and then they're going to land into C. But it might not be the case. They might go from A to Z to B to X to anything. So they 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 do they react to things, they respond to things very different differently than we think. So uh, this might be very good exercise for us to do to understand what are the uh, what does the customer journey look like? Who is doing what? And what is like the outcome they are trying to get from that? And also, what's the benefit of that outcome? It's not just the outcome of that action. By doing that action, they probably are going to get some benefit that we are not aware of. So it's it's very good to understand these kind of things in that customer journey. And prototype learnings. I think uh, when you actually build a prototype and you test it, you will find out that as I told, the, the very valuable example of how your customers are very creative, right? So you will find out that when you test your ideas, your customers will do things very differently than what you thought. You might think that they might press uh, in an application, they, you would expect them to go and press on a drop down and then click. Rather, they would do something completely different from what you had thought. So it, it's really good to understand uh, what is the outcome of that prototype? How are your uh, users actually grasping some of the concepts that you wanted to land? So that, that can be extremely valuable as well as a part of this process. And user persona understanding. So as I mentioned in the very first part of the call, so user personas, you might think, you know, all your user personas in your product, you know, every one of them. And you might think that I know how they are using my product. But when you do these product discovery activities, you might find out that you can also serve more user personas than what you are serving. Or maybe you might find out that there is a specific user persona who don't fit well into your product. And by serving those customers, uh, serving those users, you actually um, conflict with other user persona. So it gives you new insights and, and you can make your uh, decision according to that. Do you really want to continue with that user persona, serving that user persona, or maybe adding new uh, persona? It's, it's really valuable to find those insights. So this is it about the product discovery. I would say that all of these concepts, when you do it on a daily basis, or even you could do it as some sort of like an innovation sprint with your with your uh, team members and your colleagues, this will bring a lot of new insights. And uh, I'm I'm very confident that uh, you're going to love it. So uh, thanks again for joining this session, and please do. Um, uh, write some questions and feedback. I will definitely take that into account and uh, keep answering your questions. Thank you.